Hello everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever and whenever you might be watching this video from. This is coming to you from TD High, Treasury for Design Integrated. I hope you are all doing great. For those that are subscribed to this channel, I want to say a very big thank you. Thank you for the support. It's really, really encouraging. I pray the Lord will bless you a great deal in Jesus' name. Now, I decided to make a video on this particular topic because, firstly, it's a, a request. And secondly, I, I noticed, I've watched some videos, but I noticed there's a common ground at which almost everybody follows. Now, the, there's a unique thing about this particular style, it's, and that uniqueness is that you can manipulate it however you want. But I noticed that they didn't address some issues. I'm not saying that this video is going to be the best video ever on this particular topic, but I'm just saying that it's going to address some issues which I noticed, I noticed that it didn't address. For example, for those that have protrude belly, it can cover things like that. So, after going through this tutorial, I do hope you, you are going to find it very interesting and that you are going to be able to draft your own and comes out very beautiful. So without wasting much of our time, let's go to the pattern tape. So, I glue down all my vertical lines. So I quickly run through this. First thing first, is that I took half inch inward to serve as my guideline. And this half inch is going to be for my shoulder seam. So from there, I came in by starting all my vertical lines from my guideline. I took 8 inches downward. Now, in this tutorial, I'm using my bust, my own measurements. And my bust is 36. 36 divided by 6 plus 1.5 gives 7.5. So I'm going to be marking at 7. By the time I turn, I stitch in the sleeve to the main body, it's going to enter 7.5. So marking 7, I added 1 inch for my shoulder slope. That gives me 8. And that's my chest line. Okay. My boss point line is 10 and half, right from this half inch guideline I took 10.5 and my under boss is 14.5, I wrote that too, which is my under boss line. My waist length, my blouse waist length is um, 18 inches and that's this, then the blouse length itself is 25 so this is 25 and I took down half inch for the M color ones so the next thing I'm going to be doing is to determine my ham pole curve so to do that my shoulder measurement is 14 14 divided by 2 is 7 I'm going to add quarter inch to that. You can either do quarter or half inch. And I choose to make it quarter because I like my shoulder seam to sit on my shoulder bone. So I took seven and quarter. That's seven point two five. And I go on my chest line. I mark the same two and I roll it across. Standard shoulder measurement, shoulder uh, neck width rather, is 3 inches. Mark that on the shoulder line, which is my guideline. On this line, mark 1 inch inward for my shoulder sleeve. Connect the two lines together. And I'm going by up, go up 
my half inch to my shoulder seam and connect it to the page of the paper. Then I'll determine my arm hole for the front. I measure whatever I have, seven, get the midpoint, three and a half. From this point, come in by half inch. First, my bust divide by four is nine. Come here and mark nine in the On the chest line, I'm marking one inch. So I'm connecting these three points together. The next thing I'm going to do, because it's going to be a princess bustier blouse, so I'll get my boss fan, which is nipple to nipple. So for my nipple to nipple, I use seven. I'll have half inch to that. Seven divided by two is three and a half. Add half inch, that's four. I'm going to mark it right through. Go to my hand line. And I'll connect it straight. So let me confirm that. Let's go. Oh, so. The half inch I have in is for the seam allowance to join that particular the two center panels together. Now I'm going to take this up by one inch. Now to get my princess that I'm going to twist my tape in along the ample curve here I have 8.3 I just take the edge of my tape to meet that point determine the midpoint I have 4.1 so I come right here and mark 4.1 it's here right from this 4.1 i'll come down by one inch i'll mark it on this one inch i'm going to be taking half inch on both sides now you can go ahead and download the video by the time you are watching it over and over again to be able to get this Know it's quite easy it's for advanced class but i know you can get it right on my boss point line this is my boss point line i'll be taking one inch above the market then come down by one inch one inch below i mark that point now i'm going to connect this one inch above to the midpoint of the darts my dart leg at the ham hole Then I'll connect my dark legs. Now, for the lower one, I'm going to go up by 1.5. Now, why do I need this? It's going to be a princess that by the time I'm cutting the curve at your joining, because it's not a straight curve, you'll be needing an extra inches here. To sew it back together so that it can mix. So for some people they go up by one inch. I choose to use what work for me. 
in most cases one inch does not work it usually does not mean so i prefer to go up by 1.5 so that by the time i finish my stitches if i have a little bit of excess i'll just trim it up then this that i took out from here i'm going to transfer it back to my chest line that's one inch come right here and mark then reconnect my lower arm to that point so i'm done with that so to bust here this right on my thunder bust line i'll be taking one inch on both sides for my dart now for those that has bigger boss, you can do as much as 1.5 to 1 to 2 inches depending on the body shape. But for me, another boss, one is okay. On the waistline, I'm going to be taking half inch on both sides for my dart. And I'll take that half inch down to the end line too. Now for those that has them, um, on this waistline, I'm taking out because I have a little bit, you know, belly. For those that has flat belly, you can take this one inch on both sides that you took at the under bust line. You can equally take it on the waistline and on the hip line. I mean the length of the blouse. But for this, by the time I'm connecting all these dots, it's going to edge out, meaning it's accommodating my tummy. So I'm connecting all my dots. All my dots. Now whatever you're taking out as that, you are going to be returning it to the side. I hope you can see it's forming shape already. The boss. Now this is the shape of the boss. With this, I'm going to be shaping it because it has pointed edges, which shouldn't be. And aside that, it has a little bit of excesses that I need to hedge out here. So I'll use my curl ruler. Get that through. I hope you can see that. With all the excesses and the sharp edges, I'm going to be edging them out. So with this, I'm done with that. So I'm going to be repeating all my horizontal measurement. Now my boss is 36 divided by 4 is 9 inches so which I have here already and I took one as that I transferred it back so I'm repeating all my horizontal measurements now I'll be needing because I'm going to it's going to be a panel so by the time I'm cutting this I'll be needing half inch on the on this side and half inch on this side to stitch it together so I'm going to be adding all of that so this is nine plus one that i took as that here gives me ten and i'll be needing one inch up on the side and i to join it together i have it as 11 then i'll be needing 1.5 you can use two if that's okay for you 1.5 is okay for my seam allowance 
as 12.5 then I'm taking out quarter inch here as that I'll go there you don't need to move the time so half inch is you measure whatever you have and transfer it back you can either add it up the way I did or there's another method let me try the second method here from here I have where I have this my curved curved line is 3.1 you can take this to 3.1 and place it by omitting the dart there and place it right on the next top line then continue with your measurements so my round on the boss line my round on the boss measurement is 30.5 divided by 4 it gives me 7.65 approximately 7.7 uh, seven to the quarter and come in and mark this seven to the quarter here yeah. then i'll be needing half inch on both sides and join it together from there and mark that's that's one then i'll be needing 1.5 for my seam other ones that's that or that's second method or let me repeat the first one I did here. My boss, round on the boss, is 30.5. 30, 30 Divide by 4, it's 7.65. Approximately 7.7, 7, 7 to the quarter. So I can come here and mark from here, here is 7 to the quarter. I took 1 here, 1 here, that's 2. I come here. I have my two here. I need one inch to add it up together. That's here. Then I need 1.5 for my seam allowance. That's here. Now on the waistline, I'll go over to which most of my students prefer this second method. Carrying your table over really doesn't work for them. So let me just stick to that. On my waist is 33. 33 divided by 4 is 8 and quarter. So from here, I come and mark 8 and quarter. This way. I took half on this side, making one. I come here and mark it. I'll be needing one inch to stick the two together. Then I need 1.5 for my seam allowance. Mark it. This one and five. So together I have 12 inches. Now my hip is 40. 40 divided by 4 is 10. Right there, I mark my 10. The end line. I took one at the center for my darts. I'll take the turn it, then I need half inch on both sides, half on this side and half on this side to stitch it together. That's one. I'll turn that. Then I'll be needing 1.5 for my seam allowance. I'll turn that. And with that, I can connect. Then I want to determine my neck width and the neck depth. The neck depth I want to be using for this tutorial. Make use of five. That means at my turning, the, the lining is going to end up at five and a half. 
has a neck depth and on the neck width I hope you can see this now when you are taking the neck width and extending it beyond the 3 inches standard don't connect it straight once you take your tape measure right to meet this initial 3 inches standard you turn you twist the tape measure right on the shoulder slope to continue the rest of your measurement so let me work with let's say 5 to 5 and 5 is ok I like to write it down so that when I'm taking that to the back I remember that's what I use because the neck width is standard so I'll connect it And decide to change this now for what I have done here this with this I'm true with the main bodies this is going to be the center front and you are going to be placing it on fold so it means with this I have six pieces or six panel blouse itself because this side panel is going to be panel one the center is going to be panel two then you are cutting this on two pieces of this that will be panel three so it means you are having three at the front and three at the back but that of the back if you are placing your zipper at the back it means you are going to split that into two so if that one is going to properly, of course, gives you four panels. But whenever you are counting it, you don't count that slash because of the zipper. So that's that. So I'll be going, making the back. So when I'm done drafting the back, then I can proceed into showing us how you can turn it to eight panels, then the main 12 panels I decided to do in this video. Now for the back of the blouse, I've laid down all my vertical line as well in order to save time. So I'll just quickly run through from the edge of the paper coming up inch inward for the guideline as well as the same the shoulder then take in eight inches inward which is of course the bust divided by six plus 1.5 whatever it gives you add one inch to that for your shoulder slope so mine is seven plus one that's eight inch eight inches that's that then right through next mine I wrote is my length to waist now, for the length to waist, to measure that, you are going to take your tape measure at the knee, at the back of your spine, where you have your spine bone, the bone at the neck. You take, place your tape measure there and measure right through the spine. You will stop exactly where you have the deepest shape in the back where your the backbone goes in deeper mine is 14 it's definitely varies so if you are taller it's going to be higher than this so mine is 14 mark that and for those of us that have not watched that video i'm going to be dropping the link in the description box so that you can go and watch the video on how i drafted the main bodies i dressed it details there but this is the major thing that you need to deal with zip bulge so I'm going to be taking that as well and that is needed if you are placing your zipper at the back for this tutorial I'm going to be placing the zipper at the front right side to make it well detailed so that for those who want to place theirs at the back can equally work with this so that's 14 then my blouse waist length is 
18 inches so right from my half inch guard line I mark 18 then the length of the blouse 25 and I added half inch for my M allowance so from at the edge of this paper I took in two inches I'm not going to be needing this much but I like giving it two inches while I'm drafting so that I can give me room to draft my zipper allowance so I'm taking out this now stands as our center back so I'm taking all my horizontal measurement from the line of my zipper so just right go to the shoulder my shoulder is 14 divided by 2 that's 7 I added quarter inch for the seam come to the chest line and do the same now roll it across right on this line I'll mark one inch inward my shoulder and neck width standard three mark that now connecting it send this mark up in this Okay, see this well. So I'm done with that. I came up by half inch for the shoulder seam and get the midpoint. I have seven on this line. The midpoint is 3.5. My boss divided by four is nine inches. I mark that too. And I'll place a curve in between here and there. On my back, thank you. So that's that, and I'm going to be repeating the rest of my measurements. Now I need to put in my dots right on my waistline I'm going to include my first span divided by 2 plus half inch and that is 4 mark it 2 I'm going to be stopping that, that leg at 1 inch below the chest line So let me change the marker. So changing the marker paint. I want to come in paint. So yes, that you can see this clearly. I just want to draw the line to make it more consistent. So on my waistline. I'm taking half inch on both sides for my dart and I'm connecting it on the hip where my blouse length ends I'm going up by 2 inches that's where the dart leg is going to stop and I'll connect my dots Now for the back, so I mean, I'll go ahead to give my horizontal measurements. I've done for, on the chest line, I'm putting my 
course divided by 4 that's 9 I have it already because I'm going to be paneling it so I will need half inch on both sides to join it together so I'll have that one inch I'm not taking out any that way so I'm just going to be adding one inch to, for stitching the two panels together then 1.5 for my seam allowance then on the waistline my waist is 8.25 that's the 3 divided by 4 8.25 that's 8 and quarter so I'll come here I have 8.25 I took one out as that I'll be adding it that's 9.25 then I'll be needing one inch to stitch the two panels together making it 10.25 and I need 1.5 for my seam allowance. Then my hip. My hip is hip divided by 4 is 40. That's 10. 40 divided by 4 is 10. And I'll be needing 1 inch to join my panels together, making it 11. And I need 1.5 because I'm not taking out anything from there. I'll need 1.5 to join 1.5 on my seam allowance. And I can connect my dots. And see from the shape that it's not so foggy because. I have a little bit of um, belly. Yes. Now, to make it a princess, I'm now going to be placing a cough to meet this starts to the midpoint of the armhole. Yeah, I'm done. Okay, next is the neck. The neck that I use at the front is five. Go right there and mark. You can see that mark five. Let me make the neck even. Five five and decide to use a V shape. The choice is yours you can manipulate it as you wish. Okay, to start make this line to the zipper area straight. When you are turning to the very very easy. And now for those that will choose to place their zipper at the back, this is where you need to deal with the zip pouch. Now to create my CV slant, that center back slant, I'll come to the line I have my length to waist I talked about initially. I'm going to be picking the quarter out. You have a zipper spine you can take as more as one and one and quarter but when it's too deep of course it's going to be looking upward so right on this point go six inch upward which in most cases for someone with my measurement it ends at the shoulder I just line then go right from this length to waistline come down by 6 inch as well 6 inches then connect it and 
the middle line to the skin sharp edge and cut that out. So I took the recorder out here. I'm going to be returning it back on this side so that I won't have a shortage. Now with this, I'll be redrawing. It's going to give me a little bit of excess on that side and the little parts but still very very workable. So I'm drawing the sides the same. So this is no longer needed. So I cancel that down for me to know I'm working with that. So with this, I'm done with six pieces. So I have one, okay, this panel one, this panel two. Then by the time you cut this in two pieces, you have a couple of this on this other side. It's going to give you panel three. And because you are placing a zip in here, it's going to give you, this is going to be in two panels as well. So to, from here, I want to plug in my zipper so I just need one inch if I decide to use more than that if I'm a beginner for well, half and one inch is enough so right on this line this zipper line I've crossed this line out it's no longer needed so I'll be placing my tape measure on this fourth line to measure out my zipper so right here, I mark one inch outward. One, one. Just keep following that fold line. And by the time you are fixing in your zipper, it's going to follow this shape. With this, it's going to lay very well at the back. I tried it so many times, it comes out more beautiful and lovely, even on my clients. In short, I hardly do any dress, I will have a bad zipper without my CD's It's very, very, it makes your dress come out beautifully at the back without any fold or wrinkle so this is my zipper around now I'm going to go ahead to turn it to 8 pieces So now to make this, I have a front here, to make this 8 pieces or 8 panels, it just is the same format. All you just need to do is that you are not going to be cutting this center, center front, unfold. It means you are going to slash it. So it means you have panel 1, 2, by the time you cut this unfold, you have 2 copies of this. That's 3 and 4. So 2 of this, 2 of this, that's 4. And for the back, you are going to be having two of this and two of this, that's four, making it final. So, the next one is the 12 panel. Now, for the 12 panel, the first thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be removing my seam allowance out. I'm going to be marking my seam you know I while we're doing this I marked 1.5 so this is my seam allowance it's going out so I'll be able to work with the rest now you measure you don't want it to look awkward though the choice is just that's why I said you can manipulate it 
So you are going to be measuring whatever you have here. You divide it by two. So I have close to six. But I have this at 5.8. So that is a six. I mark three inch inches. 3.1 because I have 6.2 here. 3.1 and portion it as you choose. Let me mark 4 and 2 here. In between here and then I have 6, 2, and 3 and connect it with the core. So with this, if you do not remove your seam, by the time you are placing your panels, you are going to have some, probably the center too big, too wide, or the next panel to it is too small. So I will advise, and because that's the way I do mine. So with this, I have one, panel one, panel two, panel three. So I'm going to have a copy because this is just a cutter of the body. A copy of this will go for five, six, four, five, and six. That means the whole front alone is six panels. So I go over to the back two. I'm going to be repeating the same. Mark out all my seam. That's my seam. So I divide whatever I have in between because this that is going out. So here I have six and a half. So I'm marking three and quarter. Three and quarter as well. Marking three three quarter here. And three and a half as well. Three and quarter. Here. Take the same process. With my measurement, I can see that this place is a little bit closer. Let me take it inward. The choice is just you can manipulate it, it's easy. So if you want to go with this, I have panel one, two, three for the back. So a copy of it on the other side is going to go for six. So with this, I have six good panels. And if you want to make it beyond 12, then you need to section this two, section this, section this, so you can manipulate this style as much as you desire. So, but you will notice that while we were adding our measurements, I only had that extra allowances to stitch these two panels together. I've not included these two panels. So, I'll proceed in doing that now. So, now to section our panels to create the gore, where your gore is going to start from. This the uniqueness of this style. Now, in most video I watch, they usually place it at three, at the, the waist length rather. Place it at waist length. But what about those that has big tummy? Someone like me, though it's not too big. So what I usually do, right from under bust line, you can place your goal line on in any of this in between your underbust to your waistline 
the choice is yours. But I choose, in most cases, to come down by 1 or 1.5 from under the bust line. So you can place yours at 2 below the under bust line. So long it doesn't go right into your under bust line. So I'm placing mine at 1.5 below the under bust line. That's going to represent my goal line. So I'm going to label it goal line. Now, you will need this label because by the time you are, you are cutting all this paper up, you won't get confused. So, wherever I'm putting GL, GL means that's where my goal is going to start from. I'm going to repeat the same for the back as well. So, note one more thing to note for my shoulder line, I'll mark where I place my goal line. So, that's the, that's the same inches. So, I'll go right to the back and I'll fix that to the back. Now the next thing to do, just like I said earlier, I only had a seam allowance for these two panels. I've not added for this. So it means at my cutting, by the time I cut out the pattern and I'm placing it on the fabric, I'm going to be adding half inch on this side and half inch on this side to stitch it together. And the same thing goes for the back. I have half inch for this side and half inch for this side. Don't forget this is panel one, panel two, and panel three. Panel three, panel two, and panel one. So with this, I'm good to cut. So let's begin with the front. So when I cut, when I'm done cutting, I will transfer it to placing the door. For those that want a yoke, at the front, you want to place a yoke at the front of the blouse. You can choose any shape you want. For instance, my cleavage starts from seven, so whatever you can place in, I don't want it to show my cleavage, so I'm going to be placing six inches here because at my turning. Then I place it and have at my then I'll be connecting it at the initial midpoint. But the choice is just just like I said. I want to place a yoke and make it a curve. This is my initial midpoint. With this, that's a yoke. So when I slash this portion open. I'm going to place half inch seam allowance on the upper part of this 
panel three, the center panel. And I'm going to be placing half inch of the lower parts of the yoke itself to stitch it together. You can choose to make it straight as you wish. If you are making it straight, you can make it go lower if you want. You can make it a heart shape. Only that is going to give you a deeper form and make it a large shape which we commonly use in Nigeria as a sweetheart. So the choice is yours. That's for the you. Just don't forget that wherever you are placing your you, you must put, for example, for the heart shape, you put half inch just make sure, make sure you label it so that when you are placing on your fabric you remember to add the allowances so for this i do not want a yoke i have a couple of this style in my wardrobe already i have the one with yoke the one that is not with yoke i have the six i have the eight i have the twelve so, I'm going to be having the second armhole line. I hope you can see the way I'm cutting. So this that is coming out. This is my first that leg. I'm taking it out. This is what I was cutting. You can see your darts, or darts rather. So this is where I'm cutting the next one. This dart leg is going out. Convenience is So if you are cutting this on, if you want to make it eight panel, it means you are going to be placing probably an half inch to stitch it together. When you place one to one point five, you are placing a zipper at the back. But if you are not making it eight panels, it means you are cutting this particular panel, panel three, on fold. So I go ahead to cut my panel two out. Three panels are ready. So you have it. You have the panel one, two, three. So let me put this aside and cut back.
to turn on the station bell and I upload the video for the second part of this tutorial where I'll be transferring the pattern from the fabric to cut it out the stitch. When it's together, I'll make it too long. Too, too long. This. Give this video a thumbs up. Let me record this first. Subscribe to this channel. I encourage you to subscribe to this channel. If you have any other questions that have not been probably you think I didn't address well, I'll drop it in the comment section. I shall be glad to answer your questions. Two of this mix up your bit panels. I'm cutting out my zipper. This guy is very unique. Very, very unique because you can manipulate it however you choose. This. Don't forget to come out by half inch to join in the princess back to the back. It's important. See, I have my three panels at the back. I'm going to repeat it, each of the panels on the other side to form my six panels. Six at the front, six at the back, total 12 panels. So I proceed to the next stage of drawing out my book. You can see this is panel one, first panel, panel two, three, and four. Five and six. That's for the front. Then the back. You can use a belt. This for a little girl. And you have panel one as the first one. Two, three, four, five, and six. In total, making twelve panels. And for this, you have panel one, two, three. You start it at the center, making it up. And for the front, you have panel one, two, three, and four. Making it. You can place the peplum there. Now, to put that our go, I've decided to use another color um, marker pen. Now, one other thing, another thing I mentioned earlier but I noticed that it's very common in other videos that they place three inches of the book you can make it to be more than three the choice is yours so long as you have enough fabric now this of course is going to have more beauty to it because giving more volume to the book so I place my panel 3, which is the center panel, on another pattern paper. So, assuming this is my fabric, you can notice that 
I place half inch allowance here and that is for my seam allowance don't forget that because you have paneled it already so you need an extra allowance to stitch it back now I do as much as five depending on your fabric don't forget the five inch you are adding you are still going to see stitch half inch out of it so it's going to end up at five and a half but when you begin to go beyond them let me say six it's it's going to be looking upward for a fact but five inches is okay six is good so long you can you have enough fabric so from here at the end side right at this is where my panel ends so right on the mark five inches out that's it then connect it with a slab line to where i have my goal you can see goal line that's why i leave it with a ruler this is one method of doing it that's one method Because I have half inch here already, I'm not going to be placing any half inch on this side because I've added it to my main body's allowances. So I'm just going to cut this out so that you can see how it looks. I should address is by the time you cut all those panels and the go, it's going to be giving you sharp edges here, which you don't need. So you, you do that in two ways also. From here, you can come up by one inch, mark it, and curve it inward. Give it a curve. Call it out. But for me, I choose to do my cutting at my stitching. When I'm stitching it, I'll have joined it first. Join all my panels. And I just place the curl all through. So that's very, very easy. But please, if you're a beginner, try this method to deal with that. So you have it cut here. But for me, Depending on how long you have been doing it and how well you can maneuver your fabric and do, do my cutting at my stitching. So that's for one of the panel. That's one method of doing achieving your panels. Let me remove the pin. So that's with the panel that you have so another method to achieve this if you don't want to waste this much of your paper my students usually prepare the second method you know of course pattern all these papers are money so they like to manage and i equally love to manage the paper as well so what I do, the second method, which I feel is much more easier. Come right to where you have your goal line and measure it to your end line. I have nine and a half inches. You have half inch to that to give you 10 inches. 
then you have determined how wide you want your gold to be. So I said we'll be working with five. So I zoom in. Okay, this is just sort to five. Yes, sort to five. So this is my hemline from here. Mark five inches. Go up here by 10 inches. All we got was fine. There was nine and a half, but what half is to make it 10. Do a triangle line, make your paper to be triangle. Cut back. This is the switch. I'm going to be marking. I started going by 1 cm. When I mean 1 cm, it means the other side of your tip measure, where you have the smaller bars in your tip measure. This is the cm. Just mark in one cm. It's okay. Place your first your panel on it this way and set it down with the paper tip. Three of this. Oh, it's okay. So it's going to go in by that half inch at the upper part where you have the edge of the triangle. It's coming in this way. Stitches. Oh, sorry. Sit it down with the tip. Hold it in. So that's the second letter. So whichever works for you. As letter one, letter two. You still have the same. So you can equally come up by one inch. And hold it in. It means you are doing it this way, don't forget when you are placing it on your fabric. I always love to illustrate, especially for the beginners that I'm watching. So assuming this is my fabric, I'm cutting for two, it means I'm placing on fold. My center front is going to be on fold for the six panel blouse, it's going to be this way. You have the folded edge in the center. This straight line. Place it at the edge here. You make sure that your fold is enough to accommodate your goal. You can see this can't accommodate it well enough. So you place it this way. Place on fold and cut out. But if you are not, if you are going to panel the center, probably with a zipper or you are turning it to a 12 panel. Now, don't forget to always include your half inch allowance to stitch it back the two centers together. Place it this way in between here and here is half inch. So, place half inch, place in an eye, and place it this way and cut it out. That's it. So, another thing 
I want to mention is that where to place your board. Now, for the center one, be the center back and the center front, you don't place four there. It's going to be looking very, very fun. You can try it out and see how it looks. If it's okay by you, fine. So for, you are going to be placing a ball on this side where you have this two panels meeting. There's going to be a ball here, a ball here, a ball on this side too. You can as well place a ball on this side seam. For, for the center, no go. If you are making it it's with a zipper, don't place the go. If you are making it straight itself, please try it out. Don't place it. It's you really it looks fun. It doesn't bring out the beauty of that style. So to cut for this panel, so I'm done with the center panel. Let me go to the, to the second panel. So to cut for this panel, what I was trying to say initially is this. I'm going to be cleaning this down. Let's make a delivery so that it will accommodate my gauze. this way now to accommodate because I've, i wrote here that i'm going to be putting half inch so from here i'll mark my five inches connecting it straight together This is where I have my ball line a little bit already. Connect this way. So it means I'm placing half inch. I'm not going to be cutting it like we did for the initial. So going out by half inch. If you like, you can add the half inch outward here and go ahead and still connect it as if you choose to but if not as if you have enough fabric of course to accommodate that Cutting this way. So, assuming I'm cutting on my fabric, just cut it this way. Can see the uniqueness. Oh, sorry, I forgot. I'm going to be adding. Let me just see the back. And yet, uh, Five inches is right here. Next is my goal. I'm cut 
Ici, on se trouve un emploi. Là, t'as une petite je peux suivre. I have it, my same allowance for this part already, so I'm not going to be having any extra output to be the same. So that's fine, I'll see. So. This, I have a copy of mine. And see, it has a very full apple. Then, one more thing I want to address is this. So, I've been working all the on the back panels, on uh, the front panels. Now, for the back, I said the uniqueness of this style is that you can manipulate it. If you notice in the video, if I showed area the bigger one has a peplum at the back so as it is you can decide to place the peplum even though it's a panel will go to give it more volume fuller you can decide to place the peplum at the back so you can choose to slant it out of course from where you have your core line, call it up and replace it with a panel uh, with a peplum. The choice. So it's very unique. You can play with it however you like. So long it comes out where you can place a belt, you can wear it like that. It's just a unique top on its own. So with this, I hope you believe. We'll be able to do a great deal with this star. So this is so unique, so much ways to it, and it comes out beautifully well. Don't forget to like this video, give it a thumbs up, and see you in my next tutorial. Thank you.